Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help others find the best value hi-fi home theater headphones. And today we're talking about how to hook a subwoofer up to anything and maybe set it up. This is version 2.0. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about how to set up a, a subwoofer. To any Today's sponsor is Sith Audio Audiophile Toilet Paper. That's right, Sith Audio has done it once again. They've now created Audiophile Toilet Paper. So you can make sure when you're flushing this down the toilet that it's the highest quality toilet paper you can get. It's $31.12 a roll. Or you can get a dozen for a lot more. Sith Audio Audiophile Toilet Paper. Available at all the finest retailers, like Tractor Supply Store. All right, subwoofer. How to hook it up, and why are we doing this video? We already did this video, or I already did this video, because that video was done a while back, and it's painful to watch, and people are still watching it, so I wanted to do one that is not as painful to watch. I know that might be hard to believe for some people. We have, right next to me, an SVS subwoofer. This is the SB1000 Pro. This is one of my favorite subwoofers. However, it can be a little bit pricey at $500. But this is a good example of how one can set up a subwoofer or connect a subwoofer to just about anything. So the first way to connect a subwoofer to just about anything, well, anything that has a single subwoofer out, is via the LFE or low frequency effect input, which on this subwoofer is right here. I'm gonna show you some pictures and everything a little bit closer up so that you can see a bit better. So on a receiver or an amplifier, there will be a single subwoofer out. And what that does is it takes the sum or all of the bass frequencies from all of the channels and puts it together and then ships it on over to your subwoofer via an RCA cable or a purpose-built subwoofer cable. But a purpose-built subwoofer cable is just an RCA cable. So any old RCA cable will work to hook up your subwoofer. Hook one end of this to your amplifier or receiver. You hook your other end of this right into the place that says LFE. Now, some subwoofers will have an LFE or low frequency effects switch. Or in this case, there's an app that you can actuate or turn on low frequency effects. What that does is it takes the filtering out of the subwoofer and puts that onto your receiver. So if you don't have low pass filtering or high pass filtering on your amplifier, don't put it in LFE on the sub because you'll want to control the gain or volume on the sub itself but more importantly, the crossover point on the sub itself. So what is a crossover point? Well, it's pretty simple. It's just telling the subwoofer which frequencies or which level of the music you want it to reproduce. So a low pass filter is just telling the subwoofer where to cut off the frequency. Good place to start with a subwoofer is around 80 Hertz. So what that means is 80 Hertz and below is going to the subwoofer above 80 hertz the subwoofer doesn't care about it so all that is being offloaded onto your front speakers we'll talk about setting up the low pass filter and the levels and everything a little bit later in the video but I, cat's kind of out of the bag 80 hertz is a good place to start the second way to hook up a subwoofer to an amp or a receiver most of the time this is amps though is going to be through the rca outs or on your amplifier it'll say preamp outs. What this is doing is taking a left and a right frequency and it's taking it into the subwoofer and then there's a variable voltage output on the amplifier or preamplifier that is going to control the volume once you get the gain or the volume dialed in on the subwoofer. It's very easy. Now this isn't this is not a preamp. This is not a preamp out. It looks like, looks identical. Let's pretend like this is a preamp out. So what one would do is they'd take an RCA uh, right and left from here 
and they put it right into there. Now you may be asking yourself, why are there two sets of RCA plugs on this? Well, one is an input, one is an output. If one has a dedicated power amp, what one would do is take the RCA outputs from the preamp, if it only has one set of preamps, into the inputs, and then take another set of RCAs or RCA cable from the outputs into the power amplifier. Now you're controlling the levels after you get the gain or the volume set on here. You're controlling the levels from your preamp or from your integrated amplifier. The signal is passing through the subwoofer and back into your power amplifier where your speakers are hooked up. The third way to hook up a subwoofer is if the subwoofer has what are called speaker level inputs. And that's what these are right here. If your amplifier or your receiver or whatever you're running into it, like let's say you have a little class D amplifier that doesn't have a subwoofer out, you can still hook up a subwoofer. So the only thing one needs to do is take the speaker lines out of here, right and left speaker, and instead of running them directly to your speaker, you would put them into the speaker inputs here, and then you take another set of cables and go from speaker outputs to the speaker. Now you got your subwoofer basically in between the amplifier and the speakers. So now you're still getting that variable voltage output, which is going to control the level or the volume of the subwoofer. Again, once you have the gain or level of the volume of the subwoofer already set. So that way, when you turn your music up, the subwoofer turns up with it. Sorry, I had to put the subwoofer on the floor. It was making me nervous with my rickety old table. So let's talk about how to dial in a subwoofer. There's oftentimes three different controls on the back of a subwoofer. One has the volume or the gain. They can be used interchangeably. The low pass filter, which again, tells the subwoofer which frequencies you want it to reproduce. I always think a good rule of thumb, start at 80, 80 Hertz. A lot of times those dials go between 40, maybe it's 60, all the way up to 250 Hertz. I would start at 80. Then it's not very complicated. Put the gain or the volume level at 50%. Then you get to start having some fun. So get it all hooked up, start playing music through it or a movie, probably music, because then you're gonna get a constant set of bass frequencies. And maybe do something that you're familiar with or it has a repeating bass line or repeating drum line so that you can continue to hear the bass notes. Now, simply shoving your subwoofer against the wall or between the speakers, is in between two speakers, is not necessarily going to be the best way to implement your subwoofer. It might be more complicated than that because the room plays a pretty significant part to how the bass frequencies are reproduced. I'm not gonna get into all that. Point being is if you have a small room and you have the sub shoved all the way into the corner, it's gonna be a lot more, mm, a lot more bass because bass really is pretty easy to understand in your brain, in your mind. So if you have it closer to a wall, it's gonna push that bass. If you're sitting close to the wall, that bass is gonna kinda of come down just like someone threw a whole big bucket of chocolate syrup on the wall, it's gonna drip down. So if you're close to the wall, you might get some of that chocolate syrup on you, which is a lot of bass frequencies and it might not sound all that great. Even when you're sitting in a certain position, even if you lean your head forward or lean your head back, sometimes you can hear a big difference in the level of bass. So placement with a subwoofer is very important. One of the ways that you can take the guesswork out of it is to get a very long RCA cable and connect your sub that way. Put the sub where you want to sit when you're listening to music. Turn on your subwoofer and then just crawl around the periphery of your room until you hear the level of bass that you want. And then just put the subwoofer there. It's called the subwoofer crawl. Although traditionally you would actually pick up the subwoofer and move it. But here you just put the subwoofer where you want to sit at and then do the opposite, you crawl around. Which is probably a lot easier you crawling around than you crawling around with a sub, with carrying a sub. It's easier that way. Once you find the spot, throw your subwoofer in there, hook it up, and you're good to go. Now you get to start dialing in the levels and the crossovers. So for crossover, if you have larger bookshelves or tower speakers, oftentimes you can cross over the subwoofer a lot lower, maybe around 60, maybe around 40. 
because those speakers are already doing a great job of reproducing bass just the way they are. So you don't want to add a whole bunch more bass in the frequencies that you don't need to be adding it, so you cross over the subwoofer lower, therefore sending less of the bass frequencies to the subwoofer. If you have smaller bookshelf speakers or really itty bitty ones, you're gonna to wanna to cross over your subwoofer higher. Now, you can look at the specifications on a speaker, but that doesn't tell the whole story. You really need to do this by ear. Now, if you're really advanced and you wanna do a microphone, you can do a microphone and make sure that the levels are all perfect. But who has a microphone, except for people that are really crazy? I, I have a microphone. I don't use it though, I just do it by ear. So keep your, keep your crossover at 80 initially. And then you can start dialing in the volume of the subwoofer on the subwoofer itself. Once you got it where you like it with music, turn it down a little bit. That's, that's what I've always found because initially I'm like, oh yeah, this sounds really good. And then in practice later on, I'm like, oh, there's a little bit too much bass. So get it where you like it and then just turn it down to titch more. Once you get the levels dialed in, you can start messing with the crossover. But most speakers are going to be okay at 80 hertz unless you've got a really capable speaker on the low end it's gonna be just fine then for your speakers your front speakers or your surrounds or whatever you'll dial in the crossover in the receiver now remember if you have the lfe turned on on the sub and sometimes that's a switch sometimes it's done through the app you need to do all the crossovers in the receiver itself for music most amplifiers most two channel receivers don't actually have bass management, which means they're not putting a high pass filter on the front speakers. However, there are some subwoofers that will put a high pass filter on your speakers. It's like the SE8, SE12 from Emotiva. The way you would connect those is you run a preamp outs of your preamplifier or the RCA outputs of a maybe a DAC with volume control. You'd run that into the subwoofer and then you would take the RCA outs of the subwoofer and in to an amplifier. And now you have a high pass filter on your front speakers and the low pass filter is set on the subwoofer itself. Now, if this is at all confusing, don't worry about it. Don't worry about a high pass filter yet. Just worry about getting your subwoofer hooked up and you can do it three ways. Subwoofer in, subwoofer out of the amplifier or the receiver. RCA outputs from your preamplifier or your receiver or speaker level inputs from your amplifier from the speaker level. So you don't need a subwoofer out. You can just run the speaker cable. I'm sorry, I'm a whole bunch of stuff over here. Run the speaker cables out from your amplifier into the sub then sub to the speakers itself. Even if you don't have a subwoofer out, you can still connect a subwoofer, but that subwoofer needs speaker level inputs because if not you're not hooking it up via speaker level inputs so you need speaker level inputs to hook up a sub through speaker level inputs i know crazy right so what are some subwoofers that i like and i would recommend well the svs sb 1000 pro because number one it's pretty small number two it's sealed and i feel like it sounds real real nice number three it has an app so you actually don't have to continue to go back behind the subwoofer and change the level and change the crossovers and things like that. It also has a variable phase control. And what phase control means is just syncing up the subwoofer with your front speakers or your whatever, all the speakers. Some subwoofers only have a zero and 180. So you have two choices. You sit down, flip the switch and see which one sounds better and then leave it there. Some actually have a variable phase control, which is a knob. You just turn that knob until you start to hear the bass. Sounds like it's coming out of the speakers, even though it's coming out of the sub. So you just dial it in that way. But worry about phase later. Get the volume right on the sub, get the crossover right on the sub, and get the placement right on the sub. Phase, you can worry about a little bit later. For a budget sub, I like the Polk SPSW, PSW 10. It's about 130 bucks. Also like the Sony subwoofer. I don't even know what the model number is. It often goes on sale down to $100, but not anymore because all the prices went up on everything. So it'll probably go down on sale, probably Black Friday around the holidays for $115. I also like the SE8 and the SE12 from Emotiva. I think they're 300 bucks and 400 bucks. I think, thereabouts, eight inches less expensive. JBL also makes a very good subwoofer. They're a bit bigger though. I like small subs. 
If you have questions though, or if you have a question about a sub, whether or not it's good or not, whether or not it's good value, stick it in the comments. Let's see if I'm familiar with it. Don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your new subwoofer hooked up to just about anything and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <laughs>